So uh, give us a snapshot with China and, and, and uh, Saudi Arabia. What is the crown prince, do you think, trying to accomplish in China? What do, does Saudi Arabia want out of China? What does China want out of Saudi Arabia? Sure. Well, the, the Saudis have looked to China for quite a number of years. Uh, when uh, King Abdullah became king in, two, in 2005, his first uh, international trip was to China. Uh, I think fast forwarding now to the current crown prince, uh, he is anxious to show that he's still a player on the world stage in the wake of the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Uh, he's also uh, looking for uh, further business deals. Uh, the IPO for Aramco uh, uh, crashed and burned, uh, and so he is now looking perhaps for China to acquire an interest in Aramco or one of their other uh, state industries. Uh, the Chinese, on the other hand, are trying to build their belt and road system uh, to develop infrastructure around the world, uh, linkages for their commercial activities. Uh, so they're going to be building probably high-speed rail in Saudi, uh, other infrastructure there. Uh, and then, uh, of course, the Saudis notice that China does buy a lot of oil from Iran, their arch rival. It wouldn't surprise me if they'd like to get some of Iran's market share of the oil. Uh, and then, uh, because the Saudis are now perhaps having some trouble with uh, gaining American nuclear technology, they may be looking to China to acquire that as well. So give us a snapshot of uh, how it looks to Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince right now. He, when he brought out his new approach for Saudi Arabia, which included the floating of Aramco, it was in part because he was feeling real pressure on his budget. Is he still feeling that? Absolutely. Uh, they're still spending about 5 or $6 billion a month in Yemen. Uh, that's a burn rate that is not sustainable. Uh, their sovereign wealth fund has gone from over $700 billion to uh, somewhere around $500 billion. So he is desperate uh, to improve uh, their foreign reserves. Uh, he's, he is desperate to uh, attract foreign direct investment. And I think that's a lot of what this is about. So uh, give us a, a view into the relations between the United States and Saudi Arabia right now. Uh, there's been a long-term relationship there that you know so well. You helped tend that relationship. Yeah. At the same time, we had that murder you referred to of Jamal Khashoggi. Has, have we recovered from that? Have those relationships recovered from that? Should they? Uh, I think they have not recovered and they should not. Uh, we are probably at the lowest point in the relationship since 9-11, which is when I arrived in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the difficulty here is that the Trump administration uh, wants to look the other way and uh, give uh, Mohammed bin Salman a mulligan uh, on this horrific act. Uh, but it ignores a series of policy failures uh, that he uh, basically owns. Uh, the failure of the Aramco IPO, uh, the kidnapping of Hariri, the prime minister of Lebanon, the incarceration of so many uh, leaders and government officials of the Rich Carlton. Uh, and so this is, this is one of a series of uh, problems here that I think uh, America has to take a look at and reevaluate the relationship with the Saudis. Yes, we still have common interests, and yes, we still want an alliance, but it's probably going to need to look a good bit different from what it did 15 years ago. So, Mr. Ambassador, you say that the, the Trump administration apparently wants to let bygones be got bygones. Are they going to be able to do that? Because Congress seems, on a bipartisan basis to a large degree, to really be asserting itself in the, on this issue. And we have even the likes of Lindsey Graham, who's been a staunch ally of the president in some regards, being very critical, very critical of the crown prince, saying he really won't deal with him again. And we've got various uh, resolutions and activity on Capitol Hill saying we need to act with respect to the Saudis. Uh, this is an important uh, aspect of the uh, nature of our government, and Congress is apparently asserting itself in this regard. Whether they are successful in, uh, in imposing their will on uh, the policy is another matter. Uh, my guess is the administration and the execution of policy is going to slow play anything Congress does, as they did with the Global Magnitsky Act, uh, which uh, the, the uh, Trump administration uh, was obligated to uh, brief Congress and to assess the importance of sanctions. They pretty much ignored it, and Congress so far has done nothing about that. Well, I, that was going to be my next question is the Magnitsky Act with respect to the death and murder of uh, Mr. Khashoggi. Uh, have they passed the deadlines? There are certain deadlines in the act, as I understand it, whereby, right. whereby the president has to act. Have they missed those deadlines? Uh, they have missed those deadlines, and I think have indicated that they have no intention of imposing sanctions. So the only sanctions thus far that have been imposed are a travel ban on some of the hit men uh, in the group, uh, which means simply they can't come here and go to Disneyland. That is a tepid response and one that I would think Congress would not find adequate. Can Congress on its own just impose the sanctions? Will they? Uh, 
No, I think they are unable to do that. Uh, they could pass legislation which uh, potentially would be uh, vetoed by the president.